This is fitness celebrity, comedian, actor, and personal trainer, former NXT superstar, hot, young, Brian Nemeth, and you are listening to another wrestling podcast. It's time for uh, another wrestling podcast. The measuring stick just changed around here, buddy. You're looking at it. The there is, the best there was, and the best there ever will be. They got the answers. Change the question. The cream of the crop. Nobody does it better. These are the best in the world, brother. These are the best in what they do. When we talk about the legends of the sport, there's only two in my book. Another wrestling podcast. Another wrestling podcast. Now can you dig that, sucker? <laughs> All right, all right, all right. Welcome to another wrestling podcast. This is episode 86. I'm Steve Credo. And I'm Jonathan, the brain, I'm sticking with it, Benjamin. The man's got a gimmick, and he's going to live with it, ladies and gentlemen. Jonathan, this is another wrestling podcast. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for joining us. Jonathan, before we get to anything, anything today, we have to get... Uh, get the word out. What, what's happening in, in, in our hometown of Poughkeepsie, Jonathan? Yes, that is absolutely correct. January 22nd, 2016, starting the new year off right at the Mid-Hudson Civic Center. We have Global Force Wrestling coming the, the first time ever on the East Coast. Uh, what an awesome show and what an awesome thing for us to be a part of. Steve, let's give them a little bit more about what they can expect from Global Force Wrestling. Well, Jonathan, before you even say that, too, you know, every show people go to, you you go in, you watch the show, and that's it. So these are a lot of big names. Uh, They're coming to the Civic Center. But, Jonathan, you can also purchase a VIP experience for only 25 bucks to any ticket, no matter where you're sitting, uh, whether you're front row, back row, side row, whatever, for $25, Jonathan, you get early entry at 5.30, free autographs from all the superstars, and a special, a very special Q&A hosted by yours truly, Jonathan, another wrestling podcast, Jonathan Benjamin and Steve Credo. We're going to be doing a Q&A with all the superstars. Um, Jonathan, who's going to be there? Well, they haven't announced everything yet, but uh, if I'm just going by the names they did announce, it's definitely going to get me there. Jeff and Karen Jarrett are both going to be there. Sanjay Dutt, uh, Brian Myers, formerly known as Kurt Hawkins, Bobby Roode, Colt Cabana, and many more. Jonathan, Poughkeepsie is basically, I like to call it, uh, the capital of pro wrestling. So anybody, everybody and anybody in the tri-state area, head on over to globalforcewrestling.com. Head on over to midhudsonciviccenter.org. Head on over to anotherwrestlingpodcast.com for more information, guys. Get your tickets today. And, hey, what a perfect Christmas gift, Jonathan, than uh, uh, tickets to Global Force Wrestling coming up on January 22nd, right? And I will absolutely autograph anything that you bring for me at, at this show. I'm, I'm giving that to you for free as a gift. Uh, and I'm talking to you, Steve. Anything that you bring for me, I will sign for you. Um, I'll, I'll try to think of something, Jonathan. But uh, hey, Jonathan, s- stick around because we're going to be talking with Ryan Nemeth. Jonathan, want to tell the tell the kids out there uh, what they can expect with Ryan? Now, a lot of people may know this gentleman as Dolph Ziggler's brother. He is so so much more. He is a former uh, OVW, FCW, NXT wrestler. He went by the name of Riley Pierce in NXT. He is an author. He's written several books. His newest book, Hard Body, How to Be One, is, I would say it's flying off the shelves, but it is flying off the Amazon onto your Kindle. Um, it is an amazing book about, you know, bodybuilding, fitness, comedy. It's it's all in there. And Ryan Nemeth is just an amazing person, and we can't wait to talk to him today. So uh, be sure to go out and buy his book. It is just in time for the holiday season. And Steve, I actually got the chance to sit down with Ryan this past weekend and talk to him a little bit about his new book. So without further ado, here is my interview with Ryan Nimitz. Well, the gifts just keep on coming here at another wrestling podcast. We have a first-time guest joining us today. He's an author, 
an actor, a comedian, a wrestler. Uh, his book, Hard Body, How to Be One, is a bestseller, and uh, we're very happy to be able to talk with him. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Ryan Nimeth. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today, Ryan. How are you doing? I'm doing awesome. I'm waiting for the applause, but I don't hear any. I'm going to uh, imagine there's some kind of problem with the connection. Yes. Uh, there, okay. There's a bit of a delay, I think. So uh, there's. Perfect. Hey, thanks for uh, thanks for that nice introduction. I feel pretty cool. The bestseller author part felt pretty cool. Yeah. A- absolutely. Okay. Now, uh, obviously, right out of the gate, we're going to talk about this book. Uh, as I mentioned, it's we- called Hard Body: How to Be One. Um, what was the the motivation behind you writing this this book? Well, I had uh, looked. I was kind of doing some introspection, looking back on the last few years of my life, uh, kind of before wrestling and during NXT and afterwards, and was just thinking. I've met so many people who I, I view as experts on certain things, whether it's fitness, wrestling. Uh, writing, filmmaking, whatever. And I thought, is there some way I can combine all these different voices and put it into something that, you know, I was trying to think, like, what can I do with this? And it was during uh, uh, maybe a trip down to Hard Knock South, which is the the gym we used to train at for NXT, uh, the the home of Rob McIntyre, John Cena's trainer, that guy. And I was thinking, this place just means so much to me as a fitness mecca and also the place where I've laughed more than any other place I've ever laughed. And I started thinking, maybe a fitness book that's funny, because every fitness book I read is so boring and dry. And I started sending some messages out to people I used to wrestle with. Uh, I asked my brother, I asked Seth Rollins, Trent Barretta, EC3, all these guys. And they all were saying, yeah, of course we help you with this. So that was a cool thing. And... I said, I'm going to make a funny fitness book, and if it kind of ends up spreading out into other things like comedy or whatever, uh, comedy filmmaking. So I have some people in there who aren't what you'd call athletic uh, body type people, but uh, they excel at something else. So, for instance, Max Landis, who you might know from making the Wrestling Isn't Wrestling uh, spoof video about Triple H, yes, is an amazing screenwriter. And I think of him as like someone who is a hard body of screenwriting. So I said, I said, would you want to be in my fitness book? And he goes, why would I be in a fitness book? And I explained, well, you know, it's the work ethic. It's what's at the core of the person, blah, 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 blah. He was on board. And I started expanding that to different comedians I knew and wrestlers and all this stuff. And what I ended up with was like 60 cameo appearances by people who I've met and befriended in my life surrounded it with a bunch of funny uh, fitness tips and stories and all this stuff. I think there's not anything like this book, and I'm so happy it's doing so well right now. And uh, oh, I get so fired up talking about it. That's, uh, you know, I get too excited, but yeah. No, it's, Does that answer your question? Is yeah. Or ramble, ramble there? Okay. No, no, it's awesome. Uh, you know, you mentioned there's a lot of uh, great contributors of this book. Um, you know, people on Twitter are just going nuts about it. And I see that there's been a bit of back and forth with The Miz, um, now, was there one person's story that, you know, um, that you saw in this book that kind of surprised you? Cause I, from what I can tell, you just kind of let people write whatever they wanted. I did. I, well, I asked them specific questions. I gave everyone the same set of five questions and some people, uh, gave, you know, shorter responses and that was great. I was happy they gave anything at all. And some people like the Miz, like Dolph Ziggler, like Ryback, Evan Bourne, uh, EC3, Bronson, people like this wrote so much and gave me, uh, I was very surprised with the Miz. Um, he's someone I was bugging for months to give me his, his part of the book. <laughs> and every time I'd see him and every time I'd text him, I'd be like, hey man, send that to me. He's like, oh yeah, oh yeah. And I was, then I stopped bringing it up. I'm like, okay, he's not going to do it. He doesn't, he just doesn't want to be in it. That's fine. And then I would see him and he would go, oh, I got to do your book thing. I'm like, oh, okay, well, are you or not? So finally, the week I had to turn everything in, like, to get it all worked on, edited, and revised, at 2 a.m., 2.30 my time a.m., so 5.30 a.m. his time, he texts me, let me know what you think, I just sent it in, <laughs> and I checked my email, and it was the, one of the best parts that I couldn't believe, especially coming from someone like him who's so cocky and seems, like, so flippant about these kind of things, it was the most helpful, motivating thing, 
ever. And he concluded by saying, it's now 5.30 a.m. and I'm writing this for Ryan because I think he's got good, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And uh, when he read the book, he ended up sending me some of the most uh, nicest texts I've ever gotten about it. It was, it was cool. It made me feel like, all right, I'm doing something that's important. This is... I don't know. You know, you go through life kind of not knowing what you're... Is this a good thing to do? Is it not? Good? Am I wasting my time? Am I not? And like, for him and my brother and Ryback and all these people to kind of say, yes, this is good. You can't believe how good this is. It's almost kind of wild to hear that. So, damn, yeah. It's a good feeling. I feel like it's been really well received so far. Yeah. I hope that keeps going. No, that's uh, it's great. But I, I think we need to go back just a little bit, too. Um, you, sure. you've been writing for, for quite some time. You also have another book, which I have to say, uh, is hilarious. Um, I can, make, Thank you. I can make out with any girl here. Uh, it's also <laughs> available on Amazon. Um, yeah. you, you wrote that you've written this one. Um, now that you're kind of in the groove of writing, do you feel like there's plans for any more books in the future? It definitely. Yes. I just, I feel like I'm still reeling from getting this one off the ground. So I might, not jump right back into writing a book. But uh, the first one, I can make out with any girl here. I actually brought a paperback copy of that to my first WWE tryout. I wrestled a match and gave a resume and a copy of that book to John Laurinaitis. And I said, here, I'm I'm Ryan Nemeth. Here's my resume and here's a book I wrote. And he looked at me like kind of shocked and his head kind of snapped back. He goes, <laughs> he goes you wrote a book? I go, Yeah. Oh, that's pretty cool. I'm like, all right, sweet. A lot of wrestlers, and I don't know if it's by design or whatever, but they're a, a jacks of all trades. Uh, we mentioned earlier you're an author, an actor, a comedian. Um, mm -hmm. Now, you're, you're focused a lot on comedy right now. I see a lot of the stuff that you do. Um, do you find that comedy kind of has come natural to you or just like anything else, you, you just have to keep working at it? Uh, this is something I get into in the book also. Uh, my family, I think was very unique in that my parents, they had us at a very young age and were great parents, but it was kind of the same way if I had kids when I was 19 or whatever age, uh, the things that I were into, we became into. So things like Saturday Night Live were just. Saturday Night Live and The Simpsons kind of, and wrestling. Those three things were like the background of our lives, you know? And so, as a family, even when I would live in different cities and our brother would be somewhere else and I was somewhere else and parents were in Cleveland, we would all kind of know that we're watching The Simpsons at the same time and we all would know we're watching Raw at the same time. So it's kind of these things that it just becomes a part of, I don't know, I just always grew up wanting to laugh at things. And... I was a super shy, nervous, nerdy kid up until I was like 12, and then I started thinking, oh, maybe I can be funny too. And that kind of being funny was a way that broke me out of that shell of being shy. And uh, I think I've just fallen so hard in love with comedy all over again after leaving NXT, uh, which has been pretty refreshing. And there's so many combos between wrestling and comedy out here in Los Angeles. So many comedians I meet are secretly wrestling fans, and there's like wrestling teams, sketch comedy, improv, all this kind of stuff. So it is very liberating and very refreshing to be able to blend two things that I love so much together almost every week. So, yeah. Well, it's, it's, uh, I'm sure it can be said that pro wrestling and stand up are, are similar in a lot of, a lot of ways. Um, which one, mm -hmm. like, do you feel is personally more difficult? Uh, let me think about this. Well, a minute ago you mentioned Jack of All Trades, uh, wrestlers having a lot of different uh, things they're interested in. I think that is just the nature of wrestling is that you're an athlete, you're a performer, you're a salesman, you are a politician, you're all these different things together. So I think maybe that personality type that excels at that is more likely to also have other talents and skills too. Uh, and so comedy, you know, there's a handful of, you know, Colt Cabana has been doing comedy for years. I remember even when I lived in Chicago before I wrestled, he was already doing improv and stand-up and all that. Um, I will say that comedy hurts a lot less. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it depends. Stand-up is pretty ruthless and competitive. 
improv and sketch is more uh, supportive and there's more of a friendly environment with it. Uh, wrestling is completely ruthless and kind of everyone's in it for themselves and that's just how it has to be. I don't know. I think they're all different. Physically, wrestling is much harder, of course. There's kind of, in the grand scheme of things, I know there's all these awesome independent promotions and all that, but really there's kind of still one game in town yeah. in, in a way. And in the world of comedy, that's absolutely not the case. It's not like if you don't make SNL, you're hopeless or whatever, and you're starving. There's a million different outlets for it. So I don't know. I guess there's a lot of different ways to think about that. Well, uh, being that you've spent a lot of time in the wrestling ring and now on stage, um, have you ever ran into your brother's mortal enemy? Uh, he's been a guest on our show many times, Keith Apicary. I have. I have. Uh, we did, uh, there's a show they do at the Upright Citizens Brigade Theater here every few months, usually when there's a, a wrestling pay-per-view in town. Uh, and it, it, it's kind of a sketch comedy spoof on wrestling. And so he he's usually part of that. Dan Black runs it out here. And uh, Keith is usually part of that. My brother is usually, and I've started. I'm currently the world champion of, of uh, that company, the <laughs> fake uh, comedy wrestling company. Uh, yes, I have run into him. I saw him dive off of the top of the stage, which is like 10 feet in the air, and I don't know what he was aiming for, but he, he, he has a uh, little regard for safety and... He really is such a passion for entertaining people. It's kind of admirable and very scary at the same time. Yeah, yeah, he's uh, he's been really great to us, and uh, you know, I wish all of you guys just the the best because, um, you know, like you like you said, wrestling's one thing, and you're doing it for entertainment, but comedy's another thing, and uh, I. <clears throat> I mean, it's it's just great, and we also uh, we spent some time talking with Shane Hartline, and I know that you have been part of, uh, or you're gonna be. Is it uh, the almost Chris Pratt show? Yeah, he's been uh, planning this show. He's done a few of them so far where it's him and Chris Pratt. And for some reason, the last few, Chris Pratt has not been able to make it. So uh, tomorrow night, that's going to be at I.O. West, which is, if anyone's in Hollywood, 6366 Hollywood. You air this live? When, when is this? This will be this week, so you can go ahead and um, I know. Okay. It, yeah. So we'll already have by then. Okay. <laughs> uh, well... I hope Chris Pratt shows up. I know he's very busy, but yeah, he he books he books himself on these shows, and we hope that uh, I have yet to meet him, but I assume he'll be there tomorrow. Yeah, so. absolutely. Um, now you're you're really getting into this comedy, uh, diving in headfirst. Um, who are some of your personal com like comedic influences? Uh, Andy Kaufman would be number one. Uh, Chris Farley would be tied with number two with someone else, maybe. Uh, yeah, I love Chris Farley so much. And I think Andy Kaufman, of course, is the perfect blend of comedy and wrestling for me. Someone who, I don't know if he could exist these days because it's, so the curtain is pulled so, so wide open. Uh, but he was so admirable as far as the integrity of wrestling went. I think there's no one better than that. I remember... In NXT, uh, our head coach, Dr. Tom Pritchard, was adamant about making me study and watch everything Andy Kaufman did. And I was, and this is all stuff I've already seen as a child. You know, my brother and I would read all the books and watch all the tapes and find all the stuff. But to be now working there and have the head coach go, Briley, you need to study Andy Kaufman. I was like, okay, great. Cause kind of, you kind of forget all that. And it was just so great to have someone formally, your job right now, you're getting paid a salary to study and be like, all right, perfect. So that was kind of a cool thing. Uh, who else? I love uh, a lot of people out here. There's a lot of improv groups I like uh, that I think will start to be appearing in TV and movies and stuff soon. There's a group called the Cook County Social Club. A couple of friends of mine from Chicago who are out here now, they sell out the UTB every Friday night. They're awesome. Uh, Mike O'Brien, who is an SNL featured player now, I think he just does the uh, the short film things on there. Mm -hmm. He's amazing. Uh, every and everyone in his improv group, The Reckoning, I think, is pretty incredible too. Uh, what else? I think as far as stand up goes, I love people like David Spade and Norm Macdonald. For some reason, they've always uh, stuck in my mind. Yeah, I don't know. If I think of more, I'll, I'll mention it. 
that those, those that group is always what comes up the top of my head. Chris Farley, big time, huge. Now, um, you you mentioned it earlier that you and your brother do some stuff um, when he's out in L.A. Uh, your brother recently said on a Q and A on Twitter that um, he would like to be doing more comedy full time and possibly within two years. Um, right now, do you guys have any plans to kind of collaborate um, in the future, or is this kind of too early for that? Uh, we, he, his schedule is so demanding with, with wrestling that he'll sometimes only be able to give me a few days of warning of, hey, I'm going to be there tomorrow night. I'll go, oh, cool, then we'll book him in a comedy show out here and the place sells out. It's awesome. That's always my favorite when it comes together last minute, you know? Uh planning things like uh aside from live comedy i think it's very hard because the schedule right now is so crazy but always you know we talk all the time and run ideas by each other all the time so i I probably have to not answer so hard but he probably yeah (laughs) yeah now uh he dolph has a comedy show in boston coming up uh it's the the night before TLC, are you by any chance making an appearance at that? No, I'm not. I'm going to be that. What is the date on that? You have that nearby? Or yeah, not? that's the 12th of December. I will be 12th of December. That's a Saturday or Sunday or something like that. It's a right? Saturday, yeah. I think I'm going to shoot some. I'm definitely working here. And so, I don't think it's a live thing, but yeah, it could be on. Um, I think I'm fighting someone on a camera for something. Okay, all right. No, I won't be there. No. All right, well, I, thanks for nothing, I guess. But uh, no, uh, no, no, no. Um, now, we, we spoke about your writing career, your comedy career. Um, I want to just try to touch a little bit on um, your your wrestling as well. So um, yeah. you, you said that you guys all grew up kind of watching wrestling. Uh, was there a specific moment? I always like to pinpoint the moment that people – can go back to and say like, yep, this is, this is something I want to try. Like for me, I'm, ne- there's no way that I could ever be a wrestler, but ravishing Rick rude. Anytime that I saw him that <laughs> I was like, that's, that's going to be, I, I've got to be that guy. I've got to do that. So, uh, for you, what was that moment? Uh, also something I covered in my book. Yeah. Okay. So unlike my brother who knew at the age of four and a half or five years old, the first time our parents took us to, the Richfield Coliseum to see WWF. Uh, I think the main event was Hogan and Harley Race, maybe? That makes sense? Uh, he said right there, I want to be a, a wrestler. Like he At that age, and everything working up to that point. And I covered this in the chapter on him. Anything he did in high school wrestling, college wrestling, setting records, all this stuff, it was always because he wanted to be a pro wrestler. So I, I really think that's something cool about him is that he wasn't uh, recruited by... Gerald Briscoe and like convinced to be a wrestler. It was like he was trying to be a pro wrestler every step of the way his entire life, and finally like, and that's something where when I joined, when I went to OVW and FCW, a lot of people would tell me you know, meeting your brother it wasn't like they just found some college wrestler and go here he is, like they so often do with college wrestlers and football players. It was like they said, oh, do you know anything about wrestling? And he was like, yeah, I like, I know this, this. And they're like, oh, he's actually someone who wants to be here. Great. They don't have to convince him to uh, whatever. So, but with me, uh, I had a different path. I was more of a creative artistic. I, I, I wrestled, but I was also into writing and art and all this other stuff. And I moved to Chicago to pursue comedy. And... Right when I moved there full time, I kind of was like, ah, I may have made the wrong move. And I started thinking back to like visiting OVW, watching Nick's matches there. Uh, I would go to the TV tapings every Wednesday. I'd drive from Cincinnati to watch those. And there's something so friggin' magical about going to OVW and seeing all these guys who you knew were going to be the next big thing. And I know NXT is great and all that kind of stuff, but back then it was just such a private, sacred, secret little thing. It wasn't. It wasn't like it is now, where you have the third show is competing with Raw or whatever, which is great. It's different, but back then it was like, oh shit, this is where Randy Orton and Cena and Brock Lesnar and all these guys came from here. I'm watching my brother come out the ring in front of a hundred people, just thinking, oh my god, this is real. This is how it happens. Uh, something really unique and different about that. And 
just thinking on that, and I would go visit him in Florida, watch him in SCW. That is the week. When I visited him in Tampa in 2008, I thought, enough pussy footing around, as they would say. I need to figure this out. And I started, let's see, I moved back to Cleveland. Again, this is all in the book. I know I'm kind of rambling right now, but it's much more uh, organized story in the book, <laughs> how that happened. But I would go into a, an in, independent promotion that had a ring set up full-time, day and night. And so my brother and I would sneak in around 11 or midnight every night. And Or when he was home, which was, his schedule wasn't so demanding. I think he was only on doing TV then, as Dolph Ziggler maybe. So we would go in the ring and he would show me basic things like how to lock up some arm holes, how to bump, how to hit the ropes, all that kind of stuff. And it was just the two of us and maybe Ray Rowe, if you know him from Ring of Honor. Yes. He was the guy who was letting us in there. And, uh, damn, what a cool thing. It was just so spooky and it was like freezing cold. Uh, just a dilapidated ring, but I was thinking, wow, I'm learning the basic of wrestling from who I think is maybe tied for going to be the best wrestler ever, in, in my opinion. And, uh, then his schedule picked up and he had a move, you know, just was never home. And then, uh, I said, all right, I'm going to move to Louisville and start training with uh, Ohio Valley Wrestling with Danny Davis, Jim Cornette, and Rip Rogers, and all those guys. And that was the first time in my life that I felt I actually fit in somewhere in this community of the world of wrestling. I feel like these are my people. I know it's such a cheesy thing to say, but it was such the perfect blend of all these things I loved all along, the entertainment, performance being a ham in the ring, athleticism, wrestling, it was just all, it just felt like, yes, this is, you feel like the power of the universe in your chest telling you, this is the right move, this is perfect. Uh, damn, I ramble so much, and I'm so fired up about this. Dude. But yeah, that, no, that that's, makes sense? That does, and it's, <laughs> it's awesome to see, I don't care if we were talking about you working at a grocery store or whatever, like, it, it shows through that you're passionate about everything you do, writing, wrestling, and it's just, it's an amazing thing, so... Uh, I wish that everybody that we talked to was this excited. Um, so you you got to OVW, you said you actually won a scholarship to start your yeah. training there, which is pretty awesome. Um, mm-hmm. When you first got to OVW, you know, you said that you were working with your brother and all that stuff, but um, what was like the first thing that you thought whenever you got there? Did you feel, I mean, you said you felt at home, but like as far as the wrestling goes, did you feel overwhelmed or did you feel like this was definitely something that you could achieve? I felt like uh, some people assumed that I was instantly going to be a prodigy because my brother was so good, but I, I kind of had to take a step back and go, look, he's been working for five years already. This is literally my first week in an actual WWE ring or whatever it was. So I kind of, and it was all his guys he was, was wrestling with at OEW five years ago, kind of still with the, ro- with the roster there. And they were awesome to me. It kind of was really cool, but I always had to be like, no, 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 I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. Like, back it up. I'm remedial. Like, I'm, I'm just starting. Uh, so it's kind of a funny running joke. Uh, there's a referee there, Chris Sharp. He would, he would pull me aside and like tell me like funny little wrestling things, and I would just look at him wide eyed like I don't get it. Like I'm too new to understand <laughs> what the hell you're talking about. <laughs> and uh, I, Jim Cornette was a big fan of mine. I think because he looked at me and saw what he would say a good looking baby face guy who you know people want to cheer for. And so luckily that got me put in on TV and I'm in on in every show immediately. But I still was so new and so clueless. So I was doing my best. It was like if someone goes, hey, have you ever played football before? No. All right, you're the quarterback of the <laughs> Super Bowl. Like, it was kind of, it was very cool, but it was a lot all at once. Um, but I was very dedicated, man. I would go to every single training session that was offered, whether I was in the class or not. Uh, I trained and wrestled more in OVW when I was there for six months than I ever did ever in FCW or NXT. Like the schedule was so crazy there. Uh, I would have three or four hour practices four days a week and then there's shows sometimes four days a week too trying to find the time to sleep and work out and do whatever like it was pretty crazy man I remember when I got to SEW I thought this is so much easier of a schedule which is not what you want to hear but uh, I think because I just was overdoing it so hard cause I wanted to get I wanted to get it as fast as possible I never wanted to not be in a ring 
whether we were just doing bumps over and over again or wrestling matches or whatever, I just always wanted to be, if I wasn't in the drill at the time, I was up on the apron and weight, like I just wanted to get in so bad. Everything felt so, you know, just things were clicking. It felt so right. Cornette started booking me in matches that I had no business being in. He made me tag champ and I was wrestling for the TV title against Muhammad Ali Vaez in like really long semi-main event matches and I'm just thinking this <laughs> before the match I'd be so nervous because I just knew the legacy of the place the tradition the tradition it had all the people they have those pictures of everyone who's passed through the halls and gone on to greet whatever all over the, you walk past these people you're walking past Brock Lesnar's picture uh, Cena or all these guys and you're like oh my god oh my god how am I I'm not even worthy to walk through this curtain right now but then your music hits and you go, well, I guess I have to because if not, Cornette's going to yell at me. <laughs> and, uh, damn. Yeah, I'm thinking a uh, specific match at a Saturday night special against Ali Vaez for the TV title. And I'm like four months into it. I have no clue what's going on. Uh, but I have abs and I have a pretty face. So, of course, I'm wrestling this match. So uh, my dad came down. A bunch of my college friends came down. The place sold out. It was like 600 people standing room only. It was the, one of the coolest things ever. I look out and see people have made signs for me and think, this is not real. How is this happening? You know? Uh, and I think to give Ali a bunch of credit. He's in the book. He led me through that whole match. I had no idea what's going on. I'm just, anytime I, I would like get slammed down or something, he would be over there. I'd go, what do we do next? What do we do next? I don't know. What to do. I don't know. What to do. <laughs> oh, God. Well, yeah, and cool. you, you made it all the way from OVW. You're in FCW. Uh, and eventually NXT, you were on several trading cards, programs. Um, <laughs> how, I mean, how does that feel? Like you said, you know, you, you feel like you're very humble down there. Uh, it's crazy. You've got fans, and, but you're, you start to make some big waves. You're in FCW, eventually NXT. Um, at that point, did you still like have the, the passion for wrestling and say, like, I, I want to go as far as I can in this or... At- yeah, absolutely. Uh, speaking of being humbled, they have these gigantic banners that they put some of the uh, superstars and divas on at, at the live, the house shows. I'm sure they still do that in NXT, probably. So the first month I was there, after one month, I show up at one of the shows, and they're putting the banners up, and I'm building the ring. I see what I think is my trunks on the bottom of this, and it's like 40 feet tall, this thing, or however tall it is. And then they roll it up and put it up, and I go, oh, my God, why am I on a banner? start to get really like, oh, no, people aren't going to like this. This is bad. I'm thinking specifically of guys who've been there for a couple of years. I'm brand new, and I'm on this banner with my little flowery trunks, you know? And I'm trying to just pretend I don't see it because I really don't want to act like, oh, yeah, sweet. I hate that kind of thing. So Derek Bateman, EC3, he goes, Riley, can I talk to you for a second? I go, oh, yeah, what's going on? And he's standing there with uh, Fandango or Johnny Curtis and maybe someone like Xavier and Seth. Or, I don't know. It was like all the dudes who kind of have been there for a little bit. They know the deal. And they're all got their arms full of looking at my banner. And they go, what's this all about? And I go, I, I don't know. I didn't make it. Like, I, I don't want it. I'm you know, just giving me a hard time. And I was so like, oh, my God. Whoever made this banner, this is some kind of rib and I'm in trouble. Uh, but it, that, it was, you know... Once you get to know those guys, they're good. They become great friends. But at the time, you're so brand new, and you're thinking, what? This is just going to rub everybody the wrong way. Well, who, I'm not even on the show. Why is my banner up there? Is is it take up a lot of room in your house now, or how does that work? <laughs> I have no idea where that thing is. I don't know <laughs> where that is. Uh, Dr. Tom, I remember him saying, he goes, Brother Pierce, come here, come here, that's pretty cool. I'm going to take a picture in front of it. I go, are we really taking a picture, or is he just like a prank that I'm falling for? <laughs> so I do have a pretty cool picture of me and him in front of the banner, and then uh, Skinner, Steve Kern, he, uh, he sees the trading card, he goes, Riley, let me talk to you. I go, yeah, what's up? This is pretty cool, man, you got a trading card. I'm like, uh, so like, I don't know. It was just cool. It's a cool thing, but you're also worried to not get too excited about it because, number one, you can get fired at any time. Like, it's it's all a fantasy that can be taken away. And secondly, that's not what it's about. It's about kicking ass and, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Absolutely. Did I avoid your question or anything? No, no. It was, it was great, man. It was great. Um, <laughs> You know, obviously, uh, you're you're busy. We got just a few more questions. Um, you transitioned 
uh, to NXT, and you were wrestling, but then also became an announcer. Um, did you start to like that work more than the wrestling, or because you could kind of, I feel like you could kind of put your own spin on on what you were announcing, um, or did you still really in, enjoy the wrestling part of it? Uh, I love attention, and I love being in front of a crowd no matter what was happening. Uh, if I wasn't booked in a wrestling match, they would always try to find some way to get me in front of the crowd, so I would host the bikini, the Divas bikini competition or whatever it was. Uh, with like AJ and Caitlin and all, all Audrey and all those girls. Uh, whatever it was, they, they always wanted me to have a microphone in front of the people. I think I had a very... I don't know where that came. Maybe from the improv background, it might have been from OVW, but I just was very uh, easy, easy to connect with the fans. Uh, I used to have fun when we do the Miami Fair show. I would say, they would be cheering and going crazy, and I would say, hey, are you just going to chant whatever I say? And they were all like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I had a chair that I was supposed to auction off that Ryback had signed, and I, I think that they were saying, I was going to say, feed me more, feed me more, then I said, how about this one? Feed me chair. Feed. And, and there was... <laughs> A thousand people at this Miami Fair just sharing feed me chair. And I remember thinking, this is unreal, but you just feel such a power and it's so fun. Like, you're conducting these wild fans. That's awesome. They don't care that you're, yeah, it was kind of funny. Uh, I think I impressed Dusty Rose with my promo skills, and he wanted me, in, in much the same way he wanted me on TV right away. And whether the guys wanted to book me in matches the other night, he wanted me doing something. So he, he made me the interviewer guy. And then he started writing episodes where I would slowly start to insult Brad Maddox during interviews. And he explained, this is how we're going to get you in the ring. You're going to start fighting with Maddox. You guys will start having a program together. That'll get you in the ring. Then we're going to make you tag partners. And then we ended up winning the tag titles. And had an awesome, I think it was summertime, where we were main eventing all the house shows, some of the TVs, as our funny little tag team. And... That was priceless, man. I had to work matches with Sandow, Ambrose, Cesaro, Biggie, all these guys every night. It was so fun. Uh, learning so much from guys like that. Also, these are stories that are in the book in much more detail and much better uh, better uh, wording. Well, so get the book. Buy the book, everybody. That is what I was going to say. It is the holiday season. Um, what better gift to give than the gift that keeps on giving – Hard body, how to be one. Um, Amazon.com, correct? Yeah, go to Amazon. If you don't have a Kindle, you can get the Kindle app for your phone or iPad or whatever. That's what I did because I don't have a Kindle, but it's free. The app is free. So, yeah, it's only nine ninety nine, which is a familiar price with all your listeners, I'm sure. Yes, yes. And there's people in there. You, I could never name all of them in one breath. Uh, so many different world champions are in there. The Miz, Seth Rollins, Dolph Ziggler, Ryback, Evan Bourne. I don't know. All of New Day is in there. Uh, the foreword was written by John Cena's personal trainer, which I thought was a huge, huge, huge honor. Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I'm so excited. I want everyone to read this. Well, get, everybody go months. out and get it now. That's not all that you have. Um, I know that you've got a lot of social media out there. You're very active on it. Yeah. Um, can yeah. we can we hit, have all of those? Yeah, uh, I am on Twitter. That's my most active thing. It's Hot Young Briley, uh, which was my name, and you know NXT. Uh, my Instagram is Ry Ry Nem Nem. But if you follow one, you're sure to know what the other one is because I talk to myself or post things from the same <laughs> accounts or whatever. Uh, check those out. That's where I kind of disseminate all of my stuff. Uh, I'll do things sometimes. If you buy my book, I'll follow you. If you buy my book, I'll do... Like, I send out gifts, like, sign things of me and my brother fighting each other also. Always something interesting on Briley's Twitter, so check that out. Yeah. That's awesome. Now, um, we want to thank you so much for coming on. Hopefully, this isn't the last time you make your way to another wrestling podcast. Um, I, th- mm-hmm. I think that you are... I think this is the the tip of the iceberg for you. I've started to read the book, and it's absolutely amazing. And uh, I just want to thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulate you on all your success, and uh, just hope for the best in the future. I would like to say thank you very much for having me, and thanks for those kind words. And I hope this podcast is also the tip of the, the iceberg. 
and you guys end up just having a show on CNN someday where you just kind of rule the world. That would be awesome, and we'll have you on CNN then. That was my ultimate goal, was to kind of use that to get my <laughs> See, it comes full circle. This is amazing. <laughs> Uh, once again, guys, that was Ryan Nimeth. Uh, follow him on social media. Go out and buy that book, Hard Body, How to Be One. We cannot wait to have him back on the show, and I see nothing but huge things for this gentleman in the future. That's right. Now, uh, Jonathan, let's get right into it. Uh, you know, we recently spoke about pro wrestling become more more of a, a legitimate form of entertainment. Uh, do you think this coming week, uh, the Slammies, helps this cause or hurts it? We're just getting right into it. You didn't even you didn't even say anything about what we're talking about today. You just put your foot down. You're putting the slam in the slammies, and uh, I appreciate that. I think that done correctly, mind you, that the slammies can definitely help this the the cause of professional wrestling, and it is entertainment. So we're not going to hide from that. They're going to put out the slammies. It's the kind of crossover between pop culture and sports we have the SBs and all of those sorts of things so if it's done right i definitely think that the slammies can help um do you, do you enjoy the slammies Steve? Uh, i've always enjoyed them i loved them you know going prehistoric days of todd pettengill uh singing his way into the beginning of the slammies uh i love them i love them um i think in recent times though it's like you know having the fan vote for it it was great great idea but i, I don't know I don't feel like it's 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 really one hundred percent of what we're voting. Sometimes I don't know, Jonathan. It, are, you it almost, saying, are you saying it's rigged? I, I I don't know. I'm not saying it's rigged. I'm hinting maybe towards that it's fixed. Uh, maybe I could say it's predetermined, Jonathan. Maybe just. I maybe. will tell you that Pete Rose is in the WWE Hall of Fame, so that could. I mean, there's a good chance that might have something to do with it. But uh, you know, obviously, with this this kind of thing the slammies it's gonna get a lot of people talking so you know does john seem to have more fans than say a kevin owens in the world and on social media probably uh i think sometimes a lot of people see these types of award shows and they think you know kevin owens is going to be a shoe and he's got to be this you know superstar of the year or whatever but then when John Cena or Roman Reigns or whatever, they feel automatically that WWE fixed it or predetermined it to make sure that that person won. Um, I don't know that that's the truth. I think that maybe more people go out to vote for, the, you know, they come out in bigger numbers. But regardless, I, I'm very hopeful for this year's Slammy Awards. And um, there's a lot of really kind of new and different categories with a lot of great people that are nominated. So, well, John, um, Jonathan, I want to cut you off right there because uh, let's go back in time. One year ago, last year, you know, the WWE app was, you know, the thing happened, and, and that's where they had all the voting pretty much on the WWE app to where you went on there, you voted for it, and, and that was it. This year, they're asking people to tweet uh, hashtag, you know, like, example, your favorite superstar of, of the year. Last year... Um, I forget who the choices were, but you know you had Roman Reigns win, and at that time everybody was kind of like, eh, you're, "You're shoving him down our throats," uh, and it was just so obvious that like him winning that would lead to you know him going win the Rumble, then winning at Mania, which didn't happen, but so on and so forth. Um, I don't know. Do you think by letting people social media wise vote now, not just on their specific site? Uh, because I know there's ways to like count up all the hashtags on you know how many this uh, there were for this and that. Do you think you know like I said uh, it seemed predetermined, but do you think it, this year could be the more most legitimate uh, voting that they've had? Uh, I think that WWE is a big enough entity that they can do pretty much whatever they want. But I do think that adding in these you know the hashtags and all that stuff all over social media, I feel very sorry for whoever has to tally it up because there's going to be some ridiculous numbers coming in on on monday but um i think that it does help it and i hope that we have a fair kind of slammy award this year i really am hoping for some newer names like i said earlier i know that kevin owens is up for some awards i know that some of the women like sasha banks and charlotte are up for some awards and and really um 
with all the injuries that happened in WWE this year with Randy Orton being out with Daniel Bryan, like some of these guys were the workhorses and really carried the load for WWE. So um, I really hope that if everything goes well, that we'll, we will see some of these new people up on, on that stage on Monday. All right, Jonathan. Well, speaking of that, uh, you know, without going through everything, maybe we could touch upon some of the awards this year and maybe, I don't know, get a feeling of who we think should win. How about that? That sounds that sounds great. Well, John, the, the the biggest thing we should just start off right away is superstar of the year. Uh, who would you pick? I'll pick somebody, but that's I think going to be the biggest one out there this year because uh, tallying this up for superstar of the year is going to be fun, like you said. So, uh, Jonathan, who who do you who in your eyes should get the slammy for superstar of the year? For superstar of the year, I'm going with Seth Rollins. Um, he was really doing great. You know, one cash in at Mania, one of the most shocking moments of the year. We'll probably get to that in a little bit. Um, but he was legitimately just uh, constant in every match. He put on great matches with every person that they put in front of him. A lot of people were complaining about his win-loss record as champion. I'm not so huge on that, but I definitely think that Seth Rollins deserves to be the superstar of the year this year. Uh, to to be honest, he's really the only choice that I see. There's a lot of great people that were in the WWE this year and worked extremely hard, but uh, for me, I, I see Seth Rollins winning that one. Jonathan, I got it right here. Hashtag Kevin Owens. Now, hear me out. Now, I granted, I, I like, I love your choice, Seth Rollins. Definitely a workhorse. Definitely a workhorse this year. But, you know, when Kevin Owens debuted, they definitely broke the mold, if you will. His debut match, he beat John Cena. His first match, he didn't lose. His first, well, his first match on the main roster, I'll say, okay. But even then, even in NXT, I don't even know how many weeks he was, he was there, but, like, his first major fight for the championship, he won the championship, uh, the NXT championship. So he had a lot of you know, milestones in his, early on in his first year in the WWE. So I alone, there's a lot more uh, accomplishments I could list, but I alone am going to be voting for Kevin Owens. Okay. All right. Well, um, I want to get into one of, I guess it's probably going to be my favorite category of the night. It's going to be the best John Cena's U.S. Open Challenge. Now, whether I, you like John... I, I laughed at that when I read it the first time, but only for a second. I was like, you know, this is this is going to be a really good award because it's... I was like, why is this a slammy? Then I was like, you know what? This really should be a slammy. This is a great uh, great concept, but I'm, I'm go ahead. Absolutely. John Cena, whether you like him or not, love him or hate him, he has been uh, an absolute... Uh, asset to the roster this year he a lot of people say he buries people and all that but he put over specific people just week after week after week after week and um you know this award should go to not only john cena but to the person that he you know he got to to wrestle and it brought legitimacy back to the united states cha- you know championship now it's kind of leveled off again but um it was a, an exciting part of raw and i think dare i say probably one of the best parts of raw this year so the choices are uh, John Cena versus Cesaro, John Cena versus Dolph Ziggler, John Cena versus Sami Zayn, John Cena versus Dean Ambrose, and John Cena versus Neville. And for me, there is no more of a clear winner than John Cena versus Sami Zayn on Raw. That was May 4th. And, uh, you know, Sami kind of got injured during that match, but. It was a, a hell of a match, and I think that there's nothing but good things for Sami Zayn in the future. But um, it really just showed how versatile John Cena had become uh, wrestling because all these people he wrestled were different styles, and Sami Zayn uh, was no different. So I think that is going to take home the Slammy. Uh, what, what are your thoughts? Jonathan, I, I would try to be different right now, but I can't. I mean, you said it right there. You said it all, brother. Uh, Sami Zayn, I think, probably had the best match out of all of them. I mean, trust me, I love Cesaro. I even love Neville's match. Uh, it put them on the map uh, even more than what they were, and it just gave them that spotlight to shine more. But I think Sami Zayn probably had the most notable match out of all these guys. So, I, like I said, I really hope he, he takes, this, uh, takes it home. All right. Well, I got one for you. You already kind of talked about this person, but I want to I want to see if it just stays constant with you. Uh, breakout star of the year. This goes to Kevin Owens, Neville, Charlotte, 
Tyler Breeze, or Braun Strowman? All right, well, yeah, uh, yeah, Jonathan. Uh, like I said, for my superstar of the year, I think he, uh, Kevin Owens would probably deserve the breakout star of the year. Uh, just for the fact that I'll state it briefly again, you know, they broke the mold when they brought him in to the main roster because honestly, when you look at him, no offense, Kevin Owens. I mean, you don't look like you don't have the most muscle. You're just a big, you know, you're a brute. You know, you're you're one of those guys. But that's I think what makes you a great wrestler is that you don't have the six pack abs. You don't need it. You know, you're 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 a dominant beast. You're different, uh, and you definitely did stuff that nobody else has this year uh, alone uh, than any uh, than anybody else nominated. So once again, I, I it has to go to Kevin Owens. Here's my thing, though. I don't want to be a conspiracy theorist. I don't want to talk about aliens and, and <laughs> Roswell. But do you think that the WWE created this category, Breakout Star of the Year, knowing that the fans would all vote for Kevin Owens and then hopefully whenever Superstar of the Year comes around, they don't vote for Kevin Owens so it can go to somebody like Roman Reigns or whatever, but the fans will be happy enough that Kevin Owens won an award at all. That's a good. That's a good point. But for a mark like myself, I would definitely vote for Kevin Owens in both categories, just cause. So. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> but no, and and I totally agree with you. This is a, a rarity two two in a row. But uh, I definitely think that um, I don't want to take anything away from the accomplishments of Neville, Charlotte, Tyler Breeze, or Braun Strowman. But Kevin Owens for me in this category is the clear winner. Sure. Now you know there's a lot of other awards, but Jonathan, if we could talk about just a few more, uh, you. You know, when when we're at the show, you get you get the fans chanting "This is awesome," uh, especially when they just love what they're seeing. So, Jonathan, there's the "This is awesome" moment of the year uh, award, which is uh, let me read the categories: uh, Brock Lesnar destroys J and J Security's car on Raw, uh, Randy Orton uh, counters Seth Rollins curb stomp into an RKO at WrestleMania 31, the Divas the Divas Revolution begins on Raw. Uh, the Shield, Dean Ambrose, Seth Rollins, and Roman Reigns briefly reunite to triple powerbomb Randy Orton through the announce table at Payback. And The Rock and Ronda Rousey attack Triple H and Stephanie McMahon at WrestleMania 31. Uh, Jonathan, if you're in the crowd, man, what are you chanting this is awesome to? Well, I'll tell you, uh, if I was in the crowd, I would watch out because Brock Lesnar's about to throw a car door in the audience and that is my this is awesome moment is when brock lesnar destroyed j and j security's car that seth rollins had gifted them on raw uh if you watch that it was just a classic brock lesnar he was beating the crap out of this car and literally <laughs> ripped the door off and part of it went flying and hit somebody <laughs> right, in I forgot about that. the crowd so uh that was my favorite uh, a very close second would have to be the Orton countering the curb stomp at, at uh, WrestleMania 31. But for me, the the time that I got up and was dancing around was probably when Lesnar destroyed that car on Raw. You, uh, you just said it for me, Jonathan. I would definitely pick the Randy Orton one, though. Uh, just because of that move. I love when wrestlers come together to just think of something unique to, like, what could we do to uh, to end this? What's the what's a great finisher? And I think that was probably the greatest thing I've seen at WrestleMania that night. Um, you know, just that counter. Uh, it, it, they made it into like a uh, a gif online. So I don't know. It was pretty cool. It was one of those things that I just remember over and over. So I would definitely be chanting, "This is awesome for the Randy Orton." counters Seth Rollins curb stomp so uh, either way you know another this is awesome moment of the year so uh, I don't know it was pretty we'll see what happens I guess we will but uh, I think the last one that I want to talk about is another one that's going to be a very very hotly contested uh, category and that's going to be WWE Diva of the Year now this was the year of the Diva Uh, it's no surprise that this is a category it is you know, who walks away with this? Nikki Bella beat AJ Lee's record. Is she the clear is she the clear <laughs> choice for, for Diva of the Year? Or is it Naomi, Paige, Sasha Banks, or Charlotte? Now, listen, the Divas Revolution happened. Um, Paige, Sasha Banks, Charlotte were all part of that. Um, I really enjoy Sasha Banks' work, and I know that everybody is in love with Sasha Banks. And I think that everybody's going to vote for her. But as far as the actual diva of the year goes, I'm going to have to say the most consistent, the person that went out there and fought the most, it's not going to make people happy. But 
I really do believe that Nikki Bella was the diva of the year. That has nothing. I listen. I I'm a diehard fan of wrestling. Have been for years and years and years. But there's really no arguing that now. Whether or not it was done in the best manner with her beating AJ Lee's record, that's you know she's getting that information from somebody else. They're saying, "Hey, this is what you're going to do." But she owned it, and and I think she did awesome this year. She's a if you look back at some early Bella's matches versus where she's at today, uh, over and over and over, Nikki Bella this year WWE Diva of the Year. I'm gonna get that vomit taste in my mouth, Jonathan. I can't. I have to speak up for the rest of the the fans out there, the marks listening. That I think Sasha Banks, regardless of what we have seen her do on Monday Night Raw, which hasn't been too much yet, but I think Sasha Banks really deserves it, especially the match she put on with Bailey at NXT Takeover in Brooklyn would probably have to be probably one of the greatest uh, women's matches I've seen to date uh, happen in a WWE ring, uh, and that just. That on its own, I think, is why I think if Bailey was on here too, if you could pick two, but uh, just since Sasha was on there and did that, she's phenomenal. And I think if they let release the beast a little bit on uh, on Raw on the main roster, uh, people would see that. And I, I, I don't know, Jonathan, my vote's gonna have to go to Sasha Banks. I'm sorry, no Bellas for me this year, baby. That's all right. Uh, whenever <laughs> I get the call from Nikki and Bree to go hang out at the Bella Manor, um, I will remember that you said that. But no, I, you know, that's what's great about these award shows and stuff is it gets everybody talking. It gets sure. all these people out there voting, and and you know that's what we want to do. We want to talk wrestling. We want to you know support these companies. I wish they did this for a much on a much larger scale, and you know let anybody vote for anybody because there's been some amazing moments in 2015 and it makes me very excited for what wrestling has in store for us in in 2016 that's right and jonathan you know there's tons of other awards that are going to be happening on the slammies this year happening uh on monday night on on monday night raw i kind of wish it had its own show and didn't wasn't a part of raw but i get the point and i get it yeah kind of kind of combined it a little bit to get more people just to watch it but regardless uh tell us what you guys think tell us maybe an award we didn't talk about who do you want to win uh you know tweet us make sure while you're tweeting your vote for the slammy make sure you, you, you tweet us too at a wrestling pod hey you can even uh comment on the facebook link on our show page whatever you want we want to hear from you and uh hey maybe uh, i'll tell you that your choice sucks or hey it's a great choice, right, Jonathan? Well, I'm not going to tell anybody that the choice sucks, but that's <laughs> that's Steve. He's the Grinch this holiday season. So, uh, need one, wow. Mr. Uh, let's let's stop that right now. <laughs> now. Um, you know, listen, we really love when you guys get active with us on social media. So, you know, tweet us, follow us on Instagram, like us on Facebook, and let's just get this conversation going because at the heart of it. We are wrestling fans just like you guys, and we want to know what your thoughts are. So uh, thank you so much for listening today. Episode 86, Steve. We are we are chugging down that road to the historic 100th episode. Uh, we couldn't have done it without you all. That's right, Jonathan. And just entice everybody out there to, hey, well, why should I comment? I don't care. Jonathan, we're going to be giving away tickets to Global Force Wrestling happening in Poughkeepsie, New York at the historic Mid-Hudson Civic Center once again on January 22nd, 2016. So make sure we're going to be giving content. We're going to be doing contests, Jonathan, either on Twitter, on Facebook, who knows? So make sure you follow us because you never know when we're going to be giving these tickets out. And uh, Right now. Okay, right now, Jonathan, we're giving away. No. Not right now. I'm going to hold it back a little bit. Let's make everybody sweat a little bit. But that's the thing, guys. you got to stay tuned. you got to follow us because you never know. You could be uh, winning some free tickets from us because we've given, a, we've given a lot away this year, Jonathan, from tickets to T-shirts to, to anything and everything. You just don't know what's going to happen on another wrestling podcast. So make sure you stay tuned. And if you like our show, guys, make sure to check out some of our friends. Check out Main Event Marks. Head on over to Facebook.com slash Main Event Marks. You can join Angry Cooter and his panel of smart Main Event Marks every Thursday at 9 p.m. for an uncensored show for the Marks by the Marks. That's right, and we are here to spread the wealth. Um, If you love professional wrestling... 
we urge you to go over to pwpnation.com. PWP Nation is a wrestling media website and community that loves professional wrestling. They strive on creating an array of interesting articles and reviews on everything professional wrestling. Head on over to pwpnation.com. Also, be sure to head on over to ProWrestlingSheet.com. It launched in August of this year, and it strives to report on the stories you actually care about in the world of professional wrestling, not just clickbait filling most news sites. Founder and editor-in-chief Ryan Satin previously worked uh, as a senior producer for TMZ.com, where he has helped the company become a force in wrestling reporting, largely in part to his exclusive stories he landed on a constant basis. Make sure you head on over to Pro Wrestling Sheet. Well, that's the show. Uh, We want to thank you all for listening today. Every week we do this show free of charge for you, the fans. If you're wondering how to repay us, we have just the thing. Subscribe to us on iTunes, and while you're there, be sure to rate us and give us a good review. And if you're looking for more information about AWP, then head on over to anotherwrestlingpodcast.com. We are all over social media, and you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and more. And if you're an AWP super fan, you can go show your support by going over to prowrestlingtees.com and buying one of our official AWP shirts. We couldn't do the show without you, so tune in next week for... <sighs> Another wrestling podcast. Mm-hmm.